This video is going to be a video that I send people to when they have problems with the sleep paralysis and these demonic attacks. And um, just for instance, I had someone uh, send me a story the other day and their mother had some kind of ring or something. And um, basically they were getting attacked and they think it was because of this ring that she had. Uh, there, there was scratches being left on them. There were scratches being left on the headboard. Um, the bed would shake and 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 uh, come up off the ground and slam down. That's classic demonic activity. Some people say poltergeist, all that. But to me, it's demonic activity. Now, I had this uh, video with Simon Marshall's case, and I made a video of a demon uh, in hiding in my room case simon marshall had some lady come to his house um with the priest or something like that and she lays hands on him and places these round marks with a sword through them on his hands um things like that uh and he keeps worried about these uh well he had video of like a demonic thing that was hiding behind the curtain thing in his room and these orbs that were uh, coming through and what have you. And you had there was video footage and that videos like got about thirty thousand hits or something like that. And uh, but anyway, the 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 problem is is I I try to help people and tell them how to get this activity to stop. And I noticed that sometimes people put their trust in other areas besides Jesus and His blood. And, you know, using his name as a way to rebuke these things and, and things like that. So what we were going to do is look at some of the basic fundamentals of what I'm talking about and try to explain this in a way that uh, people can get it. Now, he was talking about some Argonite or uh, Organite or whatever the heck it's called that he was going to use to try to shut that portal. But he's putting his trust in that substance or whatever that is and 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 thinking that that would have authority over these demonic powers or these uh round symbols that were placed on his hand with the sword through it i don't care if it's a symbol of an angel or archangel michael or whatever it is if you're putting your trust in that you're backing up it's not going to work and if the activity does stop for a little bit it's only because these are deceiving spirits they want to make you think that you can trust in that we're going to look at a case where um, someone in the scriptures basically didn't trust in the Lord, and they tried to mess with casting a devil out, and they got hurt. Now, I'm going to give you uh, different scriptures, and then I want to look at the hedge that Job had around him and the and how we are to get that hedge today and how what we can do um, to uh, access that type of protection. Now, first of all, there was a um, case in in Acts where these couple uh, sons of the priest and what have you, and it's in Acts 19 and 16. And let's just go look at that. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, these people were exorcists, supposedly, all right, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits, the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. So, okay, these, these guys uh, were... Uh, Jews and they were exorcists. They they took it upon themselves to use this name uh, of Jesus 
to cast out these e this evil spirit. It says, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth. And there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and priest of uh, a chief of the priest, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? So basically this uh the sons of the um the pre there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, and chief of the priest, which did so. So these, these Jewish people basically uh are saying you know, something to this evil spirit, and the evil spirit answers them and says and the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? So these this evil spirit didn't even know who these people were, but knew who Paul was, and knew who Jesus was. And then it says this right here, And the man in whom the evil spirit was, so this evil spirit was in this man, so it, it's going to use this man's body, and it says, this evil spirit took this man's body and leapt on them and overcame them and prevailed against them so that they were fled out of that house naked and wounded. And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks also dwelling at Ephesus and fear fell on them all and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. So these Jews were trying to use the name of Jesus and the authority of Jesus' name, and they didn't know Jesus as a Savior, the Son of God, and didn't know about the blood of Jesus that had been shed at this point and, and, and all this. This is in Acts. So this is after the Lord had died on the cross, and Paul was, had already been called into the ministry, and Paul had just uh, sent handkerchiefs out and, and, uh, from his body and what have you. And, and the people who received it, the evil spirits departed and diseases were healed and stuff like that. There was some miracles and what have you going on. So these people were thinking, oh, we're going to get in on this and we're going to cast these things out. But since they didn't know the Lord, the evil spirit took this demonic possessed man and used his body and leapt forth onto these people and hurt them and suffered them. And they run out naked into the streets and wounded. So, you, you know, you have to know the Lord. It, it, the Lord's the only way. Now, that was a case where some men tried to use Jesus' name and even some of the apostles' names and uh, take authority over these demons, and it didn't work. Now we're going to go and we're going to look at Job and look at this idea of the hedge and how these spirits go from earth back to heaven and back to earth and even underground and what have you. And they roam around and we're going to look at that hedge of protection and the, the way that these beings try to get legal avenues and legal rights to come in to your life. And then we're going to start looking at the authority and the way you can get this hedge. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking, and from walking up and down in it. So first of all, I would like to say that there seems to be appointed seasons when these fallen angels are supposed to come and check in, so to speak, with God. That they, they it says that there came a time where they basically come and present themselves before God. And basically, let's look on down and we get to what I want to make a point about. And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? And there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and upright man, one that feareth God and escheweth evil. Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear God for naught or nothing, is basically. 
Okay, let's move this on up. And here's what I want to get at. Hast not thou made a hedge around him, and about his house, and about all that he hath on every side? Thou hast blessed the work of his hands, and his substance is increased in the land. Now look at this hedge that, that uh, God has around Job. He has a hedge that's around him. He has a hedge that it's around his house and about all that he hath on every side. So there is no way for the enemy to get in and touch Job, nor his house, and this hedge is around him in such a way that it covers every side and there's no way to get in. And then God also blessed the, the work of his hands and his substance increased in the land. Now, some people ask, well, what happened? What, how the enemy ended up getting in and, and how he ended up getting permission. And that has more to do with, and it was so, uh, when, when the days of their feasting were gone about, that Job sent and sacrificed them and rose up early or, or sanctified them. But basically Job uh, got up and he made sacrifices. He rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts. Thus did Job continually. So Job was always concerned that his kids had done something. So Job would get up and make sacrifices for them. And then later on, when stuff hit the fan, and the enemy did come in and took a, took a lot from Job, um, that Job said something uh, that, that stands out to me. And he said, That which I feared the most has come to pass. So... In all the reports that I get from people, the fear is the one thing that the enemy seems to thrive on. Okay, I want to establish something here about Jesus and his authority and what he said about his authority. Now, this is after Jesus has already resurrected and they had just accused people of stealing his body and what have you and and said, well, they, you know, they came and stole the body while we slept. You know, the soldiers had fell asleep and what have you, guarding the tomb. But God had a way, and he, you know, Jesus was already resurrected. And we have here, and when they saw him, they worshipped him. Now, Jesus just showed up, and, you know, pe people were seeing him, and, and uh, they worshipped him. But some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptize them in the name of the Father and in the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always even unto the ends of the world. Amen. And buddy, that right there sums it up. I, I want you to see right here that Jesus has all power. All power. It's given to him. All power in heaven and in earth. Okay, now this is Philippians 2, uh, chapter 2. And I'm going to start about here at, at uh, verse 8. Now, first of all, this is going to attempt to give an understanding of the Trinity just a little bit, because one kind of needs to understand that. I know in, in Hebrews that the Bible says that Jesus is the express effulgence of the glory of God. Now, that word effulgence kind of means uh, outshining. Everything that God is was put into a human form, but still yet, God's omnipresent. So, 
he had to make himself into a human to come down here to speak with us. It's kind of like if there was a bunch of ants on the ground and you were trying to talk to these ants. You couldn't really communicate with those ants unless you put yourself into an ant form and then you walk up to the other ant and rub your antennas on their antennas and tell them what's going on. That's kind of the the idea, you know, a, a basic way to explain it. That the Bible says that, that in the beginning there was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God and Word was made flesh. God took His words and everything about Him and made it into a human form. And that's why right here in Philippians 2, 8, it says, And being found in a fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. Now Jesus went to the cross and was obedient all the way to the cross, doing everything exactly, perfectly, because no one else could. And then when he went to the cross, he, he died on that cross and was bruised and and for our iniquities and, and, and pierced and, and uh, all our transgressions and iniquities and hurts and sins and he shed his blood there and it, and, it, and, it, and it paid for our sins and it says wherefore God hath highly, exalt, highly exalted him and given him a name which is above every name so here Jesus is God in a human form but still yet his father, Father God, is still in heaven because in that form he, he couldn't come to this earth. So he was begotten through a virgin, Mary, and became uh, in a human. But everything about God was in Jesus Christ. And here's the verse I want to also show you. That at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven, of things in the earth, and things under the earth. Now, I want you to know that, that things in heaven are in the heavenly realm. All things in the heavenly realm are subject to his name. Now, the things in earth, this word right here that is, uh, in the Greek, this word earth means uh, on the face of the earth. Like we walk around uh, on, the, on this planet. His name has authority, and every knee will bow on things on this earth. And in this things under the earth, this word earth means subterranean. So there's a realm underneath the surface of this earth. And I have some videos called the real hollow earth, you know, stuff like that. And uh, in that video, it shows that this word is subterranean. So there's three different realms. Je Jesus' name has authority in the heavenlies on the face of this earth and also inside this earth and at and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father now this is Romans chapter 10 and I want to start here on this verse for a reason so just kinda of pack this away for now and then we're gonna look at something else but this is important because Paul was talking about some, uh, you know, certain people. It says, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness, which is an impugned righteousness, righteousness is given to us, we cannot earn it. It is, it is given, and we'll look at that in just a second. But they're being ignorant of God's righteousness. And righteousness means right standing. And it's, it's a gift. And we're going to look at that in a second. And going about to establish their own righteousness. Now, see, some people are like trying to do good things to gain this righteousness. And it says, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Okay. All right, now we're going to look on down here. Now, this is the righteousness that, uh, okay, let, let's, I'm going to kind of go, I, I kind of prepared in a certain way, but I'm going to look at this. Say not in the thine heart, who shall ascend into heaven? 
uh, you, you know, you're you're uh, trying to maybe gain this righteousness, and you're pondering who would be able to get it by what you do. And it says, "This is to bring Christ down from above, or who shall descend into the deep into hell? That is to bring Christ again from the dead." But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart, that is, the word of faith which we preach. Now, we're going to look at this. Now, this is a faith thing. You are saved by grace through faith. And that is in um, Ephesians. It says, for by grace ye are saved through faith. And that not of yourself, it is the gift of God. Basically, it's a gift from God. Salvation is given to you, and you're clothed in this righteousness of God by a gift. And it's by grace, grace meaning is free, through faith. Faith meaning you believing on something, which is Jesus Christ and his blood, and therefore this righteousness is given to you free. Okay. This is how you are saved, right here in a nutshell. And uh, you can also go and look in Acts 2.38 and, and see also. Now this is that you need to repent of your sins and ask the Lord to forgive you. And we'll, we'll look into that a little deeper in a minute. But this is the gist of salvation. You know that you're a sinner. And you go and you ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. And he's faithful and just to do that. Faithful meaning anybody who is faithful, you can depend on them to do it. And just means that he has the right to do it. And he will do it. Okay. If thou confess with thy mouth, Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Now you're making a confession to Jesus knowing that he has paid for your sins and what have you, okay? that he went to the cross and he shed his blood and was pierced and bruised and all those things and, went, and he died on this cross paying for your sins, that you would confess with your mouth that Jesus, that Jesus is Lord and shall believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Now you need to believe that. You need to believe that God raised Jesus from the dead. The father part of Jesus raised him up out of, out of the uh, grave. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now, Acts 2.38 is a really famous verse. It's one of those that people quote, like John 3.16, stuff like that. And here Peter just uh, um, basically was preaching to them that they crucified Jesus, and he was who he said he was. He was God in the flesh. He was the Messiah. And then he just told these, uh, uh, you know, Pharisees and people that, and some of them believed they were pricked to the heart, He, you know, it says. And, and they, they basically believed that. And it's like, and they asked, what shall we do? Right here it says, what shall we do? And it says, then Peter said unto them, repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So this baptism is a baptism of repentance. We repent of our sins as symbolic of death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus. And once you've done that, it says that... Uh, you receive the Lord in your heart there, and you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. And once you've received the Holy Spirit that the Lord has sent uh, as our helper, teacher, comforter, and counselor, um, then the Bible says that you'll receive power from on high, and you can tread upon these serpents and things like that. So if you have some kind of demonic being, you, you wake up in the middle of the night, and you feel like there's something in your room, you can say simply, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave this place, and it'll have to leave, uh, because everything in heaven and on earth and in the earth are subject to his name. 
Now, when it comes to avenues and ways that these beings access into our lives, sometimes it might be that there's a bunch of fighting going on in the home. There might be, um, you have a Ouija board in the house. There might be, you know, just different things like that. You need to pray and ask the Lord to reveal to you what, is going on this letting us in you know a bunch of fighting and anger and things like that can uh, hinder your prayers the bible says that you dwell with each other according to knowledge when you're with the husband or a wife lest your prayers be hindered and then think about you know uh, dedicated things the bible talks about things that are dedicated to like evil or or what have you like a ouija board would be something dedicated ghost hunting equipment can uh can draw these things in and i'm not saying that every single time that you might have something like that around that you're going to have demonic uh, spirits but uh if you're having that kind of stuff going on like the ring that that lady said maybe that was some kind of dedicated thing that was actually dedicated for the purpose of something you know that was meant for evil uh in that video where that demon was hiding in the uh person's room that he caught on camera that I have that video of, um, he had a amulet that was an evil eye. That's a dedicated to a specific purpose kind of thing, and that can draw activity to you. And he had a ghost hunting uh, box that he was trying to contact these things with. Look in, in uh, Deuteronomy, and I have well, in that video uh, where the demon was in his room, I have a little lesson from uh, Deuteronomy that talks about things that you shall not be found among you the things that you're not allowed to do contacting these spirits or even trying to contact them going ghost hunting and and uh you know putting an evil eye up in your room thinking it's going to protect you you're putting your faith in certain areas that 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 uh can cause you problems now another um scripture that i had have said in many different videos is first timothy 4 1 and you can look this one up and it says the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. <clears throat> That's such an important, such an important verse, because uh, sometimes people will do some kind of little, they'll burn some sage, or they'll have you know somebody that's in witchcraft come over, and they'll do some kind of blessing or what have you, and then the activity will kind of stop for a little bit, and then it'll come back and get worse, or you know, something like that. But, you know, if you have someone that came over and they didn't put their trust in Jesus and the blood of Jesus, you know, kind of thing, and the activity stopped, then it's not because the, those demons had to, but they sometimes will stop just to make you think that that had authority and that, that worked. But it's a trick because the Bible says that the devil and these spirits and what have you come to do three things, to steal, kill and destroy now if they you know as this verse in first timothy 4 1 says that some would depart from the faith and if you're saved like we looked at by grace which is free through faith through believing and trusting on jesus alone you know if 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 you get some kind of trickery where someone did some other thing that doesn't have nothing to do with jesus and you believe that that stopped the activity then you're departing from the faith and that's a serious thing because that's a, that could be an internal, eternal mistake. So remember, trust in Jesus alone. He will establish this hedge around you. If you need to, something comes around, rebuke it. And, and the Bible says, if you sin, no need to start fretting and worrying, oh, I sinned and now all these things are coming upon me. The Bible says, if you sin, you have an advocate with the Father. You can go to Jesus and ask for forgiveness and the bible says he's faithful and just to forgive so if he's faithful to do it he's going to do it because he's faithful to do it if he's just to do it then he has the legal right to do it because these spirits like we looked at in job they they go up to heaven and accuse you the bible says they're accusers of the brethren They'll accuse you, oh, Lord, look what he did here. And then he'll, they'll try to get permission to come down and do something. And since God always stands on his word, and his word endureth forever, heavens and the earth will pass away, but his word endures forever. 
And Jesus Christ is the living word. If anyone out there is not saved and you feel like you are being led to Jesus Christ and you want to be saved and know that you are would go to heaven if something happened to you, we can I can help you giving you an example of a prayer here. If you believe Jesus is the Son of God, you believe that Jesus died on the cross for sins, your sins, and you believe God raised him from the dead, like that scripture we looked at a minute ago, if you believe Jesus is the Son of God, God raised him from the dead, then with your mouth, we'll say this prayer, and within this prayer, it's, confession is nigh thee, even on thy lips, it's even in the Psalms, um, you can confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So if you want to be saved and you are having these problems, just let's bow, you, bow our heads and I'll help you with a prayer. And you mean it from your heart and I promise you the Lord will protect you and you can also rebuke these uh, demonic activities and things out of your life. And make sure you believe on Jesus Christ alone and believe every word in that Bible. All right, so we'll pray something like this. This is an example. Heavenly Father, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess right now that I have sinned. And I ask, Lord Jesus, that you forgive me of all my sins. Father, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. Lord, and I ask uh, that you have Jesus come and live in my heart. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. And I confess with my mouth right now, according to your word that Jesus is Lord. And I know, Lord, I know, Father in heaven, that you keep your word, and I have made this confession and asked for forgiveness. I know and I trust that I am saved, and I ask that you fill me with your Holy Spirit and begin to teach, comfort, and counsel me, and I ask that you set up a hedge around my home and around me and all that I have that there is no way to get in for the enemy to take, steal, kill, and destroy from my life. I thank you for this, Heavenly Father. I thank you for this, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now, if you have prayed that prayer and you believe that, it's not, you can pray it as long as you have those fundamentals in there and you believe Jesus is who he said, you confess that he is Lord, God will save you. It's not it's no exact formula. The first time I ever prayed with somebody, I was so worried that I got one little piece of it wrong or something like that. And basically, these people, uh, God had already been working on them, and he caused them to see their sin. They wanted forgiveness, and they wanted Jesus as their Lord. God saved them, and they were. I, when I seen them again a few times after that, they were uh basically loving uh, that they are they were saved and they loved the lord jesus and and um their life began to get better and we can have trouble in this life jesus said you'll have tribulations in this life but be a good cheer i have overcome the world i ask that you subscribe comment like these videos and i also ask that uh, all you who subscribe and you do like this ministry i ask that you please contri uh, consider contributing to this uh, channel. And you can go uh, to my Facebook page, Mysteries to Search. You can go to my channel, click on the little Facebook button, or just find Mysteries to Search Facebook page. And um, from there, you can find the Donate button. I really need some help to run this ministry. It's a tremendous amount of work to make these videos, to go and get the interviews, and just all the different things I do, the artwork, and uh, it takes a lot of time, and it's a, it's not easy to do sometimes. So I ask that you please uh, consider contributing to help me uh, do this. Until next time, I hope that the Lord blesses you and causes his face to shine upon you, and, and if you have any questions about salvation, if you have any questions about um this uh, activity that might be demonic in your life that you seem to not be able to get past or something and you've tried this if you have some kind of problem still yet contact me at brentonsong at gmail.com
See you on the next video.